Hello. Hi. How you doing? Uh, I made a video last night stating some facts about the uh, Sony E-mount. I don't know why people care about me wearing an Adidas shirt. Everybody keeps mentioning that for some reason. Um, about the Sony E-mount. Let's state some facts again because if you don't actually <coughs> fill in every little hole, someone will uh, try to drive a wedge into it. And uh, it's like you can point out a gigantic truism like uh, saying like, well, poo stinks. And then someone, oh, there's a petrified hunk of poo right there. It doesn't stink, therefore you're wrong. Well, that's a fallacy called uh, exception proving the rule. It's like, well, that's great, but it doesn't work that way. Um, poo stinks. So, you know, this is talking about debate tactics. Um, it is the case that Sony, and I'll hold on a second, I'll get into the facts really quickly, but Sony designed the E-mount for the NEX uh, APS-C camera to achieve, uh, to achieve, and this is a noble intent, to achieve a lightweight compact system that answer the needs of a lot of people. But it wasn't designed for normal fast lenses. It's just not. You can't stick a big ass full frame sensor in that shallow ass little mount and expect uh, a fast lens like this, an 85mm f1.4, to crap out that fast light and cover that big ass sensor. It's just not possible. You know, you've got one of two things. Now, I made the video yesterday, and hold on a second, I'll get into the point. See, this is where people find a hole, and it's not a hole. They just don't think clearly. Um, let's first get into the fact of what I stated in the prior video. The uh, base flange on all of these lenses is irreducible. Now, the way to actually bass backwards engineer these fast-ass lenses, which were never designed for that big-ass full-frame sensor on that tiny little shallow uh, E-mount, is you can do one of two things, like the 7200, and they're basically building a built-in Metabones adapter. You need know, just basically, you're taking this lens and you're sticking it right there, and it's all just one lens. Okay? People say, well, you know, like the 85 millimeter G Master lens, that's uh, you know the rear elements right uh, near the flange there. Well, what I didn't point out yesterday is like if you don't nail every little point down, every little point, someone will just nitpick it, trying to prove that uh, they're right and you're wrong. Well, you're still wrong. There's two ways to achieve the failure of that full-frame sensor, uh, which was never designed for these. Uh, these are Trinity lenses, by the way. Canon has a Trinity, Nikon has a Trinity. This is going to be Sony's Trinity, but actually it's not, since Sony doesn't make lenses. Um, they don't have any ability to make lenses. But anyway, these lenses made for Sony, um, the way to achieve that is either using a Metabones adapter or using um, tons and tons of glass to uh, crap out that light onto that full-frame sensor. Okay? So people said accurately, well, you know, there is this big gap in the base of this 70 to 200. It's like, well, yeah, and see that neck on the base of each one of those? Well, let's get down to the hardcore gritty, nitty gritty. Now, uh, the Zeiss Battis, for example, which isn't out yet, is, uh, is only an f1.8 lens. And then let's talk about the G Master. The G Master 85mm f1.4 has 11 glass elements. Well, this 1.8. If you just eliminate out the lens hood there, it's still a big-ass lens, especially with that big flange on the base of it. It's a big lens. The way they achieve that, oh my god, what do they do to achieve that? Well, this lens has six glass elements. Also is the case, like the uh, Nikkor 85mm D-series has six glass elements. It is the case that the Nikkor um, 85mm f1.8 G has ten elements, but uh, those ten elements, those additional three elements, are to correct for vignetting and uh, chromatic aberration. In other words, you can easily build a six element uh, prime 85 millimeter lens like this one. It's got six elements in it. And, uh, you know, Sony can't do that with that E mount. It can't be done. You see, this is this lens right here. Okay? You see that? One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is the, uh, by the way, this is the Zeiss Battis, which isn't out yet for the E mount. It's got a, a 11 honking elements in there. You see, the way that they fix that is they could have stuck an adapter in the back of there, but that causes uh, actually other issues. Uh, it also causes that uh, there's not enough uh, space there to uh, correct for uh, the vignetting. There's uh, four, five additional elements in there. So you got 11 elements versus six right here. And this is only f1.8 too. Oh my god. Now the, uh, the Sony G Master lens also has 11 elements. And of course all of these lenses have this big ass honking uh, bottleneck right down here. See, it doesn't always have to be empty space. This is the part that I didn't clarify. People thought, well, you know, that proves you're wrong. No, it doesn't prove I'm wrong. It proves I'm right. There's only two ways to achieve it. Stick in an air gap in there, like on the 70 to 200 G Master, or you stick in 
it, the air gap won't work on the 85 millimeter. There's still that gap there, except uh, it has to be filled in with five additional glass elements. Well, that's great. It's like, well, it'll be sharp. Well, yeah, it will be sharp and it will work. Uh, the issue is, is that Zeiss, I mean, excuse me, Sony nor Zeiss can create a lens to, that's this speed for that damn E-mount with six elements. It's like, well, why six elements important? Breast is 11, it gets the job done, it's plenty sharp. Because it'll, this lens, this is a necessity. It's inescapable by Sony, Canon, Nikon, Fuji, anybody. This lens will exa look exactly like a high element count Sigma art lens. It'll have low color saturation. It'll be exactly like the over-famous $4,000 Zeiss Otis, which I have used, the 85 millimeter. Incredibly sharp lens, it's actually the sharpest lens, but it has color saturation issues. I'm not the first person to say this. People that use a lot of lenses, they use the Yoda's light. You know that, damn, that lens is sharp, but it sucks. Got bad color saturation, bad perceptual uh, rendition and depth. Uh, 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 perceptual uh, depth and uh, rendered depth, color saturation. Um, it actually has uh, washed out blues, necessitatively so. It's got a lot of damn glass in it. Damn glass. There's a lot of damn glass in this lens. And it's only an F1.8. But also the F1.4 G Master has also got 11 elements in it. That Sony E-mount was never designed for these fast-ass lenses. Hardcore fact. It's like, well, that's your opinion. No, it's not. There have even been Sony execs that state the same thing. That E-mount was not designed for these sort of lenses. Well, this is the lenses that everybody wants. Here's the 7200. You see that huge air gap back there? It said two ways to solve it. An air gap like on this lens and on these lenses, you stick in a lot more glass. Oh, well, what's an issue with more glass? It works and it's sharp. Yeah, you're correct. But as I listed in other videos, lenses have a lot of attributes that are important. Chromatic aberration, vignetting, color saturation, uh, perceptual depth, rendered depth. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's not just sharp. Well, how sharp's the lens? How, I mean, that's the thing I hear all the time. How sharp's the lens? How sharp's the lens? <laughs> Great. The lens is sharp. Let's talk about the other important attributes. The number one moneymaker lens in the world, the 24-70 Nikkor, which is used by wedding and portrait photographers all over the damn place. That lens ain't that sharp, but it's got a lot of other really magical attributes of making an awesome lens. Whew. People will say, well, how can it be an awesome lens if it's not sharp? Whew. So, point corrected, all those people out there that are butt hurt about me talking about the Sony E-mount. Look, it, you love the camera, fine. I don't give a damn. If you want the lens, it's fine. I don't give a damn. You know, it's just a camera. We're not talking about someone's baby here. Like, your baby is ugly. Why oh, you can't say that? That's a baby. You know, these are lenses and cameras, okay? Not babies and children, okay? Some people actually think that they are. It's like, how you dare you say that about my camera? <laughs> get over it. See, the people that get so defensive on this stuff, are the Sony people. You say shit, you say crap about Fuji, like, I don't give a damn. You say whatever the hell you want. I love my damn camera. Same thing with the Nikon people. I hate that Nikon. I don't give a damn. I love my Nikon. It gets the job done. It makes the money. You know, it makes me money. I don't give a damn. Say whatever you want. You say something about Sony, you go, <laughs> See, this is an irreducible fact. These are the nature of the lens design. Okay? What are you going to do? That big ass sensor, for that lens to crap out that light, to fill that sensor on that shallow ass little mount. Okay, we got the mirror box of a DSLR here, and we got that shell. That makes the camera nice and thin. Oh, that's lovely. The camera's real thin. Yeah, but you know what? It can't accept these lenses unless they get modified. And the only way you can modify them is one of two ways. Sticking a big air gap right here, which you can see right there. Or, damn iPads. I hate iPads. I love them, but they're pieces of crap. Um, you got to stick in a bunch of extra glass right there. Six elements, 11 elements. Six elements, 11 elements. There have been thousands of people, like I've been shooting zoom lenses for years and years and I thought they were nice and sharp and I bought that old lens, like you said, or like a Zeiss and a low element count and I started shooting with it and holy crap, my pictures look so much better. And thousands of people say stuff like that. That's why this lens sucks. I'm not saying it won't work. I'm not saying it isn't sharp. I'm gonna say it's got too much damn glass in it. That, all this glass right back here, these extra five elements, that is to make up for that shallow E-mount and that big-ass sensor. Can't deny it. You can't refute it. You can say whatever you want. You can call me fat, bald, stupid. I don't give a damn. It's irrefutable. It's right there. Deny it. Hate it. You know, you stick your head in the sand. You're entitled to your own opinions, but you're not entitled to your own facts. This is the Zeiss Battis. F1.8 for the Sony E-mount. Right there, you see that big flange? It's full of a lot of extra glass to crap out that lens up 
hit that big full frame sensor on that shallow mount. The uh, Sony G Master F1.8, uh, 85 millimeter, also has 11 elements in it. Sony cannot design a lens like this at this speed with six elements in it. It is an impossibility. You don't believe me? Ask a Sony representative. Ask anybody. Say, why can't you make like a six element simplex prime lens to mount on a Sony? Because it can't work. Uh, why can't it work? Because I have a big sensor. You've got to add a lot of extra glass in there to make it work. Yeah. I don't care if you believe me. It's a fact. It's undeniable. It's irrefutable. Hate me. I don't care. You know, this is not a popularity contest, so... And by the way, if you think uh, all that extra glass is like uh, does something extra, no, it takes it away. Every lens designer on earth will tell you that every lens is a trade-off in how it is made. That means you can make it perfect this way or perfect that way, but a lens is never perfect all across the board. There's actually like a handful of lenses that come really damn close to being perfect across the board. Most of them are 35 millimeter lenses. 35 millimeter is actually the magic focal length. Basically, it really is. That's why every professional is like, what's one lens? If you only have one lens, what is a 35 millimeter? Why is that? Because it's magical. It's got perfect attributes across the board. That's why the Zeiss 35 millimeter is so perfect. That's why the Fuji 35 millimeter is so perfect. That's why the Nikon Nikkor 35 millimeter is so perfect. It's perfect across the board. Nikon, uh, Sony cannot make a lens. Sony don't make lenses, excuse me. Sony doesn't make lenses. Sony cannot have a lens created like this with six elements in it. Not that speed, it can't. That damn lens mount was not made for that. So they got to backwards engineer the lenses in design. So how are we going to do that? Well, we can stick a big air gap back here, like on the 7200, or we can stick a lot of extra glass in here. So deal with it. Okay. Bye. Thanks.